Uh, let's see what happens here. One ounce slugs. <coughs> Oh yeah, it's got a little punch. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Uh, let's see what happens. What is up, everybody? Let's see who's all here. Pew Pew Nation Live, episode 71. Um, man. It's been a day. I'm hot. I'm tired. It's like 90 outside and 147 degrees inside this warehouse right now. Um, I literally have this air conditioner, this little portable air conditioner, just like, just blowing on me. So hopefully you guys can't hear it too much in the background, but if you can, you're going to have to deal with the little fan noise tonight, because holy hell am I hot. I haven't cooled down all day. Um, I have been outside literally all day. Um, it's been a crazy, crazy day. We're going to talk about it. So uh, what's up, Gavin? What's up, Eric? What's up, Zach? Zach? Sorry. <laughs> um, who else is here? Uh, Facebook is... Um, is ghosting us even worse now, just so everybody knows. Um, so you guys got to go over, share the uh, the video. Ugh, excuse me. Share the video right now. Share this podcast right now. Uh, tell everybody to get the hell over here uh, because Facebook will not. Um, they won't do that. So I'm actually going to share it on my personal page real quick. So, we're going to get started here. Thank you, Zach, for uh, sharing. Um, so, what's going on, everybody? How's everybody been? It has been a week since we talked. Well, some of you I've talked to recently. but um, So, if you're not in Michigan, or if you are in Michigan and you just don't watch any news or hear anything, um, the Oakland County, which is the county that I'm in, um, health department decided to overstep their boundaries pretty much and uh, they put out a mask mandate for all schools from literally from daycares any any kid two years old through 12th grade so 18 years old there's a mask mandate that they've um, put out uh, starting immediately, it started last night, 6 o'clock at night or something, they, they pulled the cowardly act of putting out a mask mandate um, after, after business hours so that nobody could do anything. They didn't think anybody would do anything. Uh, but we did, we, we surprised them, I think. Um, so we, uh, we decided to, some people organized a protest outside of the health department uh, this morning at 8 a.m. Uh, I was there. I was part of it. Uh, as long as I could stay, I had to do some work still today, um, so I was not able to stay the whole time, unfortunately. But from what I hear, uh, after about noon, that protest went from like three to four hundred people to uh, 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 over a thousand people. So, pretty much, the Oakland, Health, Oakland County Health Department has poked the bear one too many times. We're done with it. Us as parents. Um, are all standing up. We're done with it. So, um, this is going to start happening all over this country, unfortunately. And there is the only thing we can do is fight back. So, you guys, you got to you got to fight back. I wanted to just talk about it for just a minute today. Um, this is what it looked like at eight thirty in the morning uh, outside the health department. So, the, the background there, you can see the peak of the building, um, and they got all these big trees in the front. And uh, this goes like we were. This is when everybody was just on the sidewalks. The police were trying to keep everybody on the sidewalks. Eventually, it got to be so many people that it spilled out, and the, the entire parking lot over there was just covered with people. It was, it was pretty awesome. It was pretty cool to see. Um, you guys watch the podcast. You know that I have been a um, 
a big advocate of do not comply. Um, I have a Facebook group called Do Not Comply. Uh, <laughs> and uh, actually, there will be a, uh, a new shirt coming out soon. Don't tell anybody. It's not out yet. But there will be a new shirt you guys will like soon uh, from Pew Pew Nation USA. Uh, but it's more important than ever right now to not comply. Like, seriously. Like, I know it's hard. I know there's struggles behind not complying. Uh, but, unfortunately, this is where we're at. And my goal in life, I have a, a seven-year-old. You guys all know Colt. He's been on the show. You guys have seen him numerous times. Uh, my job as a parent is to teach him right from wrong, raise him properly, and create a man. He's a man. That's what he is. He has a penis. He's a boy. Girls have vaginas. That's all there is to it. There's two sexes out there. Um, my job is to raise a man. So I am... Last year he wore a mask at school. I just kind of bent over and I was like, well, I'm not wearing a mask. I'm fighting all this, but I'm not going to argue with the school too much. He wants to go to school and he enjoys it. This year it's not happening. And everybody's with me. They're all on my side. So um, you, you just have to fight back. There's a, a quote I posted actually not long ago. And it's funny enough, it's from A Bug's Life. If you have kids and you've seen the movie, um, it's a pretty funny movie, kind of cool. Uh, but here is the actual quote here that I posted in the actual post. So do not comply is obviously the hashtag I use all the time because that is our group. Uh, but this is this is so true, and you guys you guys have to you have to understand what this means and where it's coming from. Now I posted this online, and I got a whole bunch of people that you know, oh, I get my information from a kids movie. Yeah, yeah okay. Well, those people are obviously idiots. They're not understanding the the quote. So the quote is from I think the the main character there in the picture. His name is Hopper. He's a grasshopper. The grasshopper is, are like the government. They run the ants. The ants give them food. They do all this stuff for them. They're like their slaves pretty much. So you let one ant stand up to us, and they might all stand up. Those puny little ants outnumber us 100, 100 to 1. And if you ever let them figure that out, there goes our way of life. It's not about food. It's about keeping those ants in line. And that is exactly what our government is trying to do right now. They're trying to keep us, the ants, in line. But when us ants fight back, there's a whole lot more of us than there are of them. So it's the only way that we can make change and that we can get what we need done is to fight back. Um, I'm done with it. I'm, I, I, I knew this was going to come. I am fully prepared, honestly, to go to jail on the first day of Colton school because he is not wearing a mask in school. I don't care if Oakland County lifts this mandate, which I honestly think that we made a big enough presence that they might. Um, I don't care either way. If they lift it or they don't lift it, he will not be wearing a mask in school. And that's all there is to it. Uh, they are going to have to pretty much take me out of the school um, uh, with law enforcement in, in order to get me out of there if they're going to try to make him wear a mask. So I'm prepared to fight. I'm going to fight for what's right for my kid. Uh, because that is my job as a parent, and that is your guys' job as parents as well. Uh, so I hope that you guys all begin to fight, start to fight, and uh, make your voices heard. So get on that Do Not com uh, Comply uh, Facebook group. Check it out. Um, that group is 100% shadow banned from Facebook right now. Uh, like they keep giving me these memos that I'm restricted and there's no reason behind it, and they won't lift the restrictions. So the only way to see those posts is to actually physically go to Do Not Comply's group and check it out and post because you're not going to see it in your feed because we're restricted. Because, you know, free speech is restricted on social media. So um, what's up, Mike McKinstry? Uh, Eric Johnson said, bullshit, my work is making everyone in the shop back to masks tomorrow. Um so that sucks, Eric. Uh, I would talk to all the people in your work and see if you guys can uh, exercise a, um, a strike, pretty much. Because uh, there was actually a, a, a woman that's a dental hygienist that was at the 
protest this morning, and her work said that they were going to require vaccines uh, for all employees, and the entire staff walked out uh, for a week before the owner realized that he doesn't have the ability to operate if the ants fight back. So, um, Eric, hopefully you can do something with like that. Uh, but I do understand, you know, if you're in a, a position with your job or whatever, uh, it's tough. It is. Uh, Derek said if we have to wear masks, then they need to close all borders. No, Nobody in. Put the Trump wall back up. Nobody in. I agree 100%. Uh, Alan said, so tired of this bullshit. It is time. It is time. 100%, Alan. It's time to fight back. Uh, you know, so many people just bent over and took this for a year. And uh, I'm so glad. Like, I fought. I felt like I was by myself the whole time. I really did. Because everybody around me was just complying. They're just wearing their masks. They're doing whatever they want to do. It was literally like, Chris isn't here today, obviously. Uh, but it was me and Chris. That was the only people I knew that weren't wearing masks, that, that were 100% fighting back. Um, and would not comply. So now it, it was awesome to be at that rally today, that protest today, because there's all these like-minded people out there that all of a sudden agree with me. And I'm like, holy shit, where were these people a year ago? Um, so I love it. I'm, I'm so glad to see everybody start to get fed up with everything and uh, fight back, because that's what we need to do. And the only way it's going to happen is numbers. That's it. We have to have the numbers. Um, Alan said, after listening to Dave Colder on 760 AM, I don't think it registered to him. Um, I happen to have Dave Colder's home address in Ferndale. So the next protest is probably going to be in his driveway, just so just so anybody in Michigan knows. Um, make sure you watch for that. Because, uh, yeah, I'm done. I'm done with it. Like I said, I uh, paid for the search on him yesterday, and I have his home address. He lives in Ferndale off of Woodward. And uh, the next protest, if it doesn't change, will be in his driveway. Gavin said his daughter's school is mask-free for now. That's awesome. Hopefully it stays that way. If it doesn't, you got to fight. Uh, Eric said the maintenance group is together. We were mad. Not sure they sent emails out about new numbers of cases. It's all trash. It is. 100% Eric, um, hopefully you guys can, can protest and fight and uh, do what you got to do. Um, I don't know, it just sucks. It, it The whole thing sucks. Uh, there's plenty of times where I'm just like, I'm done fighting. I don't even want to do this anymore. I'm tired. Uh, I work 80 hours a week. I have uh, a seven-year-old that <laughs> has karate five nights a week. Like I got a lot going on. And uh, I'm tired, but I'm not going to give up. That's for sure. That's all there is to it. Uh, hi, Bowie. Bowie said, sorry, I'm late. <laughs> it's all good. So uh, tomorrow, actually, guys, is Moe's birthday. Moe turns 26 tomorrow. <laughs> uh, so everybody say happy birthday to Moe. Uh, tomorrow is her birthday, her real birthday. Oh, sorry, I'm so thirsty. I'm so dehydrated still from shooting. I filmed a video today. Um, it was uh, it was a good time. Um, I went out and shot that MP12. So if you guys saw my post, uh, MP12, the bull pump, bull pump. I keep calling it a bull pump because that's what I wanted to name it. Uh, the bull pump that I think they should call a bull pump is... Um, it's a freaking monster. That's all I can say. That thing is unbelievable. I need two of them, one for each arm. Um, <laughs> I had so much fun shooting that gun today. It was 90 degrees, direct sun. We were dying out there, but it, I never got old. Like, I could have shot that thing all day. Um, it was unbelievable. Uh, welcome, Stephanie. Uh, Ryan said, today I was told I have to wear a mask to pick up a load. When I was, when I told them, no, I will leave, they changed their mind. That's exactly it. And that's the thing, is they're hoping that they don't get, get anybody that fights back. 
But unfortunately, all these companies, our government, um, all of these avenues are going to get direct fights now. Like, everybody's sick of it. Um, we're finally, people are finally standing up. All of you guys are obviously standing up. Um, it's going to take a lot more. It really is. Uh, we have literally a puppet in office that doesn't even know where he's at when he wakes up in the morning. Um, and it's just going to get worse. It's going to continue to get worse. So uh, something big is going to have to happen, and we're going to have to fight back. That's all there is to it. Uh, thank you, everybody, for the happy birthdays to Bowie. Uh, Derek said, I think the mask is last thing we need to worry about. First need our president gone and our governor gone and then start from there. <laughs> Derek, I agree. Uh, the scary thing with the president getting out of office, like, I, I mean, there's plenty of offenses that he should be impeached for already. Uh, arming the Taliban is, uh, is one main one, I would say. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> I don't even know. Like it's it's freaking laughable. It really is. Uh, but if he got out of office, if he was impeached, we got to deal with Kamala Harris, who's I don't know which is worse, a dude that literally doesn't know what he's saying that just eats a hundred Xanax for dinner, or uh, Kamala Harris, which is worse? I really don't know. I, I don't know. It's just a not. It's not a good situation, no matter what. Um, and uh, it's just getting worse. So, <clears throat> Stephanie said, "I'm not wearing a mask again at work. Not going to happen. I will walk out." I am proud of you, Stephanie, for for doing that. Um, and that's what everybody needs to do. And that's what you need to talk to your coworkers too. Like you really do. You guys got to talk to your coworkers. I'm lucky. I work for myself. Um, I don't punch a, a time clock every day. I'm on the clock all the time. After this, I go home. I get this video uploaded onto um, uh, YouTube, which I just realized I messed up and start didn't start recording this video. So now I got to now I got to do more work and download the video, then upload the video to YouTube. It's a pain in the ass, but it's doable. It's not a big deal. Um, and then I have to start editing a video. Um, I have to edit pictures. I have to go into the gun shop that I work with, Continuous Precision, tomorrow to build guns for a big job that, that we have through them. Like, I don't have the time clock that I punch, but I'm always working. So I have that ability to be able to take off whenever I need to. So it, it's kind of a nice nice thing. Um, but I also don't have coworkers. So you guys have to understand if you have coworkers, you've got to get them involved going to have co-workers that don't want to be involved, but I guarantee you're going to find more co-workers that agree with you than don't agree with you. Uh, so it's super important. You guys, you have to team together. It, the, like I said, like that quote from The Bug's Life, uh, when the ants fight back, there's more of us, there's more ants than there are of the grasshoppers. So uh, we got to fight back. All right, so we talked about, actually, we, we went into it a little bit, talking about Joe Biden um, and uh, the $85 billion in military equipment that he handed over to our enemy. Um, Brian said, I hope Illinois wakes up and boots our governor. All of our elected officials pretty much need to go. That's all there is to it. Uh, same in Michigan. Our governor needs to go. I'm honestly considering running for something, and I don't even know what yet, um, just because I, I don't think I have a shot to win because I don't have the funding. But I feel like if there's any time to do something like that and, and actually try to make a change, it's right now. So um, I'm just done with it. Uh, I don't know. But let's talk about the Taliban now. Because <laughs> why not, right? Uh, so I have a partial list of the $85 billion in military equipment that our president, Joe Biden, just went, here you go, Taliban. This can be yours. Just take it. We don't care. 
we're America, we'll just arm you, we don't give a shit. Um, and this is insane. Like, I kind of wish that I could pose as a Taliban member for, like, an hour and ship half this stuff back to myself. Because there's some sweet stuff in here. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I'm always said I unfriended ten people today. I'm tired of reading their bullshit. It's toxic and they just believe the bullshit and just follow suit. That's exactly right. And that's that's what the funny thing is. Like, and before we even get into this list, um, you guys keep bringing me back into it. Uh, <laughs> Eric said I'd love F-15. I would love an F-15 too. A couple nukes, whatever. Um, if I had a nuke, I could take care of the Taliban for the country be done with it uh, pretty easy um, but where was I going with that oh the people and it, it's so funny because we I'm sitting in a group of 400 people today outside of the Oakland County Health Department building uh, all peacefully protesting the, the law you know, law enforcement is there Oakland County sheriffs are there just making sure that nothing went crazy things like that um, everybody's walking up to him, thanking him for being there. Um, just, just super, like, respectful protest. It was actually really, it was cool to see because it was, it was very, um, it was heated, but it was respected. It was respectful. So, these two people walk out of the Oakland County Health Department. There was some free clinic, I don't know if it's a vaccine clinic, so probably, I'm guessing today, at that building. So it worked out perfect. Everybody, all these all these mask wearers are walking through us to get into the building. Well, these two walk out after getting their COVID shot or whatever they did in there, and they got their masks on, and they're trying to mock us while we're all standing there. And we're all looking at them like, what are you doing? So finally, like, they were kind of... Cl- like close to me and everybody's like what is wrong with these people like this lady's like dancing around like a like a lunatic um with her mask on pointing to her mask and just acting all weird so i was like you do realize that none of us care that you're wearing a mask that's the difference between us and the mask wearers is that and the pe- i should say the people that want to wear a mask is that we're respectful and all we want is a choice. It's all we want. I don't care if that person's wearing a mask. I don't care if you send your kid to school in a mask. I don't care. I want the choice. Just like you have the choice to wear the mask, I don't need to be forced to do what you want me to do. And that's that's exactly what it boils down to. Uh, there's no reason, like, that's the difference between... The, the groups, though. Two people walk out acting like fools because they think that they're going to get us, like, an uprise from us. And that's why I just looked at the lady and I was like, good for you wearing your mask. Like, it's a good thing you have a choice to wear that mask, but we're being forced to make our kids wear these masks. So, uh, what we just said, my body, my choice. Exactly. Uh, it's funny that my body, my choice only applies to uh, certain situations uh, if it falls into the right political realm. So, uh, I'm just, like I said, I'm done with it. We all have to fight back. I Honestly, I hope that you guys all um, all have some stories of fighting back. And honestly, you know what? I want to hear them. So I want to hear your guys' stories. Uh, post them on the Pew Pew Nation page or post them on your page and tag Pew Pew Nation. And uh, we'll read some of them next week. Uh, stories of uh, incident instances where you guys had to, you know, fight back, or you had a confrontation with somebody, or you had somebody acting just, just acting like a lunatic for no reason. Um, like I just, I love these people online that are just they, they do nothing but call people names and everything else. And, you know, you post something, uh, and you're instantly a, you're a trumper, you're a trumper. Oh, you're a racist. You're this. You're that. I've never been called so many names in my life with stuff that doesn't pertain to anything that they're talking about. Like they, they sit there and bring up Donald Trump every time you post that you're not that you don't want to um, get the vaccine. I post I don't I don't want a vaccine. Literally, I could write I don't want to get the vaccine, and then somebody would call me a trumper, uh, a bigot, 
something, you know, that I don't care about other people, this and that. It's insane. It is absolutely insane. Uh, so if you do get in any of these confrontations with these, these kind of people, uh, it, I always tell everybody it's super important that you, that you don't call names. You just have to have a cool head. You have to make sure that you are the, the adult in the conversation, pretty much. Um, it's hard sometimes, but it, every time it works out better for you. Trust me. It works out a whole lot better for you. Um, Stephanie said, if you want to wear a mask, that's fine. Don't force it on me. If the mask works, then you should be fine if I don't wear one, right? That is exactly right. Um, but you'll get argued with that that's not how masks work, apparently. Um, my big thing, like I told somebody today, I said, you know, you know what? <laughs> you can make every kid wear a mask in school, and it's not going to do anything. If you have kids, especially young kids, they're freaking gross. Those kids, every single one of those kids that's wearing a mask, or the parent that, that's like, oh, my son has to wear, my child has to wear a mask, he's protecting himself and others. And, and it's, you know, this whole social justice warrior bullshit. Um, and those, those people, like, I just want to, like, remind them that their, their kid was probably licking the inside of the toilet 10 minutes before they put the mask on their face um, and, you know, sniffing glue and everything else. Kids are freaking gross. They sneeze, boogers go all over the place, they wipe their butt, rip through toilet paper, and they get shit on their hands. They're freaking gross. They're kids. That's what they do. They play in mud. They play in dirt. Um, they, they pee their pants. <laughs> They're gross. That's what they are. So it, it's just it's insane, like, the, the whole concept of all this is absolutely insanity. It's just insane. Uh, Stephanie, you hit it, it the nail on the head. Being exposed is how they build up their immune system. Expose your kids to germs. Don't run them. I, I can't stand it. Like I, We never take Colton to the doctor. He'll get sick, gets a sinus infection, whatever. We let it run its course. That's what you do. Kids get sick. Humans get sick. You don't need to run to the doctor. You don't need to try to put yourself in a bubble. Expose yourself to germs. It's just crazy. <laughs> Sydney said they shut the mic off on Biden today. He's not the president. I didn't see that. That's awesome. I'll have to look that up. Um, yeah, it's just crazy. It just is absolutely crazy. Uh, raise your kids. That's all. That's all it is. You, you have to raise your kids, and all this boils back to that is I'm teaching my son right from wrong, um, and you'll get the argument, I guarantee it, that you'll get the argument of, well, how are you teaching your kid right from wrong if you're teaching him to break rules? Well, I'm not teaching him to break rules. I'm telling him, I'm teaching him to stand up for what's right. Sometimes the rules don't make sense, and sometimes the rules have to be broken. Um, like when they make you wear a mask over your face, or they make you get an injection, that you don't want. Those are not rules that I'm going to follow. That's not what I'm doing. I'm not going to I'm not going to teach my my kid to follow. I'm going to teach my son to be a leader. He doesn't need to be the sheep. He needs to be the wolf. He needs to be the sheep dog actually that that leads the sheep. That's what he needs. Um, and I tell him that all the time. Don't follow the group. If your friend's being an idiot, don't do what your friend's doing. Do what Colton knows is right. And that's what I tell him all the time. And that's what it's all about. That's what this is all about. Fighting back is, is all about doing what's right. All right. Let's talk about this uh, Taliban list that I've tried to get to now like ten times. Uh, i got to pull it back up. So let me put my picture up here because... Uh, because this is what the Taliban looks like right now. That is a U.S. Humvee, um, full armored, turrets, the whole nine yards, all of our technology in it, everything else. Um, $85 billion in military equipment that we just donated to the Taliban for no reason. Um, and Nancy Pelosi wants to sit there and talk about how, you know, oh, it's a war. You always leave stuff behind after a war. 
You leave humanitarian stuff behind after a war. You take your weaponry with you. You leave the couches that were in the barracks. You leave the beds. You leave the linens. You leave that kind of stuff for the country to be able to absorb and use uh, that you just liberated. You don't you don't leave $85 billion in weaponry that has technology built into it that, that your enemies can steal, um, that has the ability to kill our soldiers if we need to go back over there, which we do need to go back over there. Um, but here's the list. This is a partial list. This isn't even everything. This is just the stuff that we've been that has been able to be identified and um, uh, verified that it was left over there. So there's 2,000 armored vehicles, including Humvees and, and MRAPs, which that's the Humvee right there. 75,989 total vehicles, just military vehicles, um, FMTVs, M35, Ford Rangers, F350s, Ford Vans, Toyota pickups, armored security vehicles, just vehicles uh, that were left over there. Uh, 45 UH-60 Black Hawk helicopters. So we gave them 45 Black Hawks. That's cool. Uh, 50 MD-530G Scout Attack Choppers. Scan Eagle Military Drones. Uh, 30 Military Version uh, Cessnas. 4 C-130s. 29 Brazilian-made A-29 Super Tucano Ground Attack Aircrafts. 208 plus aircrafts total, like different miscellaneous aircrafts. Um, where was I? At least 600,000 plus small arms, including M16s, M249s, uh, saws, M24 sniper systems, 50 cals, uh, 1,394 M203 grenade launchers, M134 mini guns, 20 millimeter Gatling guns, plus ammunition for all those. That's what we left them. <laughs> Hold on, there's more. 61,000 M203 rounds, 20,040 grenades, howitzers, mortars, plus thousands of rounds for the mortars, 162,000 pieces of encrypted military communication gear, so all of our communication stuff, 16,000 plus night vision goggle sets, New technology, night vision scopes, thermal scopes, thermal mono goggles, 10,000 2.75 inch air to ground rockets, um, reconnaissance equipment, laser aiming units, explosive ordnance, C4, SEMTAC detonator, shape charges, termite, or thermite, sorry, um, AP, API, APITs, 2,520 miscellaneous bombs, um, administration encrypted cell phones and laptops, all operational, pallets with millions of dollars in U.S. currency, literally millions of dollars in U.S. currency, millions of rounds of ammunition, including but not limited to, 20,150,600 rounds of 762. I'll take some of that. 9 million rounds of 50 cal. <laughs> these are these are just the ones that like have been verified. Large stockpiles of plate carriers, body body armor, U.S. military HIDEs, uh, handheld uh, identity detection equipment, biometrics, heavy equipment including bulldozers, backhoes, dump trucks, excavators for building, plus materials. That's just a partial list. Eighty-five billion, with a B, dollars in military equipment and weaponry that we just, oh, you're our enemy? Here you go. Take it. it like, I don't even know what to say to that. that. That is, that is absolutely insane. These idiots right here have 85 billion dollars in US military and technology weaponry and technology what the fuck it's crazy it's absolutely crazy 
Um, Stephanie said, no, Biden isn't in their pockets. Who in the right mind leaves that for the enemy? Oh, wait, he done lost his mind. <clears throat> they have a problem with us having semi-automatic rifles. <laughs> exactly. Not even having semi-automatic rifles. Having a trigger pack that forces a trigger reset. They have a problem with. Having a, a brace that aids the shooter to safely handle your firearm. They have a problem with having a magazine that holds more than than seven rounds. They have a problem with. That's the stuff that they're coming after us for. But they've armed the freaking Taliban with eighty-five billion dollars in shit. Black Hawk helicopters. Here, have our helicopters. The only saving grace to any of it is that they don't know how to use half the shit. So hopefully, they end up blowing themselves up with most of it. Is what I'm. Uh, is what I hope that happens. Um, 45 Blackhawks and 50 Scout Attack Choppers. What? Uh, excuse me. Uh, Richard said, give some of that to some hillbillies in the south and see what they come up with. Hey, how about a hillbilly in the north? I'll take it. Um, Seriously, it's insane. It is freaking absolutely nuts. That is what that is what our government handed over. I don't know. It's it's un, it's unbelievable. It really is. Um, and unfortunately, it is it's the truth. I wish I was making this stuff up right now. I really just wish that this was all all a joke. And uh, I was like, ah, actually, it didn't really happen. But um, it really did happen. So, it's nuts. Uh, Eric said, I got four boxes for free, 762 by 39 Saturday. They asked for my information. I started shit that they ever asked, that they ever asked before, and she forgot to scan the ammo. That's pretty sweet. I like it. Um, I'll buy it all from you. Five bucks a box, Eric. It's a deal, man. Make you're gonna make some money there. You make twenty bucks on something you got for free. Think about it. <laughs> um, all right, let's uh, let's change the uh, the mood here. Who wants some free shit? Uh, government gives it away. I'll give it away. Psh, call me Joe Biden. <laughs> Actually, don't do that. Then I just, just stare at you guys like this. Uh, sniff the microphone. <laughs> now you can call me Joe Biden. <laughs> James Emery posted a giant link. I don't know what your link is because I can't see it right now, but um, everybody can feel free to click on that. <laughs> Sorry, James, I can't see it right now. Um, send me it, whatever it is, though, in a private message so I can watch it later. Um, Eric wants F15, please. All right, sure. Let's give away an F15. Let's do it. All right, that's what's up for grabs here. So who wants an F-15? We need to see likes, loves, hearts, all that good stuff. something even better. A Freedom Fatigues the Leather Patch American Hat um, or U.S. Hat this is a uh, shooter hat so it does not have the button on top FreedomFatigues.com is 100% American made apparel um, veteran owned Leo owned uh, awesome awesome company donates back to charities all the time this is the shirt I'm wearing today the new, this shirt back there um, this hat that we're going to give away this is all from freedomfatigues.com. Uh, my apparel line is also through Freedom Fatigues, uh, Pew Pew Nation USA. You can go to my website and check out all of my apparel. Um, but you can see my stuff through Freedom Fatigues too. Just look for the Pew Pew Nation uh, badging on it. So we're going to give this hat away right now. Um, we do have some new people on here. I love it. So new people, the way that we do these giveaways on Pew Pew Nation Live is you 
you're going to guess the number 1 through 100. Um, let's say you're guessing the number 7, which, by the way, the number is never 7. Uh, if you guess the number 7, you would guess 7 with, like, an exclamation point, an A, a period, whatever, after or before it. Um, it kind of breaks up face, Facebook's algorithms and makes it so that I can see more guesses um, because they'll start blocking guesses because they think you're spamming me. So uh, comment as many times as you want until I say stop. So when you see start, you're going to start guessing. When you see stop, you'll stop guessing. So uh, 1 through 100. <laughs> Alan said we need Chris for the number. <laughs> that is true. Um, <laughs> Chris. Chris always gives you guys an easy, easy uh, route here, so. <laughs> Keep guessing one through a hundred. And like I said, guess as many times as you want. Mandy's on here. Hi, Mandy. How are you? Haven't seen you in a while. Keep guessing, guys. One through a hundred. Um, I'll pull Chris. If you guess over fifty, you're not gonna get it. There. I acted like Chris. <laughs> Keep guessing, guys. One through a hundred. Uh, I'm trying to watch the computer screen and my uh, my phone here. So, guess, guess, guess. Keep guessing. Keep guessing. Oh, we got some close ones. Stop guessing. Stop guessing. We have a winner. Let me make sure here. Uh, come on, I know I saw it. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? There it is. Yep, we got a winner. All right. All right. So the winner of the Freedom Fatigues flag hat. It's an actual leather patch on the front of this while it's sewn on um, leather. Kind of like an OD green color. It's hard to show up on the screen here, but um, super cool hat. All American made. Um, veteran owned. Leo owned. Freedom Fatigues. A uh, portion of every sale from FreedomFatigues.com goes to charity. Uh, goes to a veteran charity, which is amazing. They helped us raise $3,700 last week for uh, Mission Zero Hundred Hours, so that was fantastic. Um, Derek, don't worry, we got more giveaways. This is the first giveaway. Uh, so the winner is Richard Klutz. Congratulations, Richard. Um, that name doesn't seem familiar to me. Richard, are you a new, uh, are you a first time listener today? Uh, congratulations to you. Um, anybody that wins anything today, make sure that you guys send me your information on a private message. Um, so, Richard, make sure you send me your information after the podcast. Let me know which one you won, and uh, I need to get all your information. So, I'll need a name, address, and uh, email address to, uh, to for shipping and all that. Oh, sweet. Well, thank you for watching, Richard. It's your first time in part of the uh, MZHH. So thank you so much for watching. Um, that's freaking awesome. Mission Zero Hundred Hours in the house. I love it. Um, and we will make sure you message me, Richard. We'll get that out to you. Let's just do another giveaway real quick, and then we're going to talk a little bit about the NRA show uh, that was canceled and get into the Smith & Wesson MP12.
Oh yeah, I love that thing. So uh, let's give away another hat. Let's give away another hat. Why not? Another one uh, from FreedomFatigues.com. This is the Buck Hat. Uh, another leather patch. Kind of a cool color, like off-white color. This hat is uh, also American made, 100% American made, veteran owned, same thing, all of their stuff is, and uh, fantastic hat. So who wants to win this one? Let's see some likes and loves and uh, let me know. Uh, Richard, thank you for doing what you guys do. Seriously, I was honored to be able to raise that much money for you guys. That was amazing. It wasn't me. It was all of these these viewers, honestly. Um, I just donated like $300 worth of ammo to get everybody going. <laughs> That's what I did. Um, but I, it was amazing. The Pew Pew Nation family, the love that you guys showed. Um, we're going to be doing more of that kind of stuff with different veteran charities, so make sure you guys watch for that. Um, but that was, that was incredible. Seriously, that was incredible. Uh, and Richard, what you guys do is awesome. So uh, I, I was honored to be a part of it on the Friday Night Rib Burn and uh, see, meet you guys and see what you guys all did. So that was cool. All right, let's give it away. The Buck Hat from FreedomFatigues.com. Um, same thing. When you guys see start, you're going to start guessing one through 100 right now. Maybe. Did the start come through? There's the start. We're good now. All right, start guessing. Keep guessing, guys. saying I'm going to lose his name. Alright. Stop guessing. Did I write stop? I think I wrote stop. Or did I just say it? No, um, I don't think I said stop. I wrote stop. Stop, 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 stop. Stop. Alright. We have our fur. We have another winner. That was a quick one. That was a really quick one. Which you know what that means. That means we got to get more stuff away. Um. <laughs> All right, so the winner was, and I'm going to butcher this name, uh, Brian Gutjohn, Gutjar, Gutcher, Gutcher, Brian Gutcher, Gutjar, Gutjar, Jirjar, I don't know. Brian, sorry I butchered your name. I suck at names. This is what we do out here. Um, Zach uh, watches every week, and we call him Zach. So... <laughs> Guchar, Guchar. All right, I wasn't that far off. That's not bad. So congratulations, Brian. You got yourself a uh, the buck hat. Are you a first time winner too, Brian, or uh, first time watcher? Anyway, where are you from? I'm getting all these names that don't sound familiar. I love it. I love new people. Welcome everybody that's new. Gut means good. Okay. Well, good. You won. <laughs> Illinois. Oh. Whew. You're in Illinois. That's fun. <laughs> That's why you're watching a 2A podcast, because you are told every day that you can't have guns, and that you shouldn't have guns. So, uh, put your name sir, right of passage on PP Nation. That's, that's exactly it. Uh, we actually start butchering names on purpose now, so. Jar means year in German. So it was a good year. I like it. All right. Uh, does your family own a tire company? <laughs> I'm an idiot. I know. <laughs> um, but welcome. Welcome to Pew Pew Nation.
Nation. Um, we have a lot of new people on here. So actually, I want to know who else is new. Uh, comment below um, if you are a first time or second time viewer and uh, where you guys are, uh, where you're from. I'd like to know where our audience is from. It's, I'm in Michigan, um, just outside of Detroit, and it, it'd be, I'm surprised. It blows my mind every day still that when we do the show, um, we have people from all across the country. It's fantastic. It's awesome. I thought it would just be mainly Michigan people hearing about me and stuff like that, uh, but you guys are from all over the place. It's awesome. So. <laughs> Botched names and Biden's failed pullouts are always things talked about on <laughs> Pew Pew Nation. It is true. I still got to. I got to order my uh, my Hunter Biden son poster to put behind us here. <laughs> That's fantastic. All right, who else is new, and where are you guys from? James. Um, James Ottinger is from Minnesota. Welcome. Man, we're from all these places that hate guns and hate uh, Republicans. I love it. <laughs> uh, 86 to 89 Army Black Ops Sniper. Damn, sweet. Well, thank you for your service, Brian. And welcome, Pew Pew Nation. Honor to have you here. It's definitely a failed pullout. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yorkville, Illinois. Uh, Richard Klutz is Yorkville, Illinois. Richard won today, too, so congratulations, Richard. Um, James is close to North Dakota. Sweet. Well, welcome. Everybody else, anybody else that's new, uh, comment below. Tell us where you're from. We'd love to, love to know where our, our viewers are from. Um, it was an honor to serve, Brian said. Love it. Uh, well, Brian, that's fantastic. You're getting yourself the American-made uh, buck hat. Make sure you guys check out freedomfatigues.com. Uh, all the American-made apparel on there, it's all 100% American-made. That is what we do. Uh, that's what we're about is 100% American-made no matter what, from the literally from the fabric to the thread that, that the fabric is made out of that's sewn together with to the ink that's used um, on our shirts. Uh, it's all 100% American made. So uh, all the military personnel, uh, retired military and stuff that are watching today, uh, thank you all for your service, for one. Uh, and you should definitely uh, love the American made stuff, obviously. Uh, retired Navy, James is retired Navy. Well, thank you too for your service, James. Um, and thank you for watching. It's an honor to have you guys. Angela got some new Freedom Fatigues gear today. Angela, what shirts did you get? Love or live. Either word made sense. Live Freedom Fatigues. I mean, I do. That's literally my whole wardrobe. Like, I don't know the last time I wore a shirt that wasn't a Freedom Fatigue shirt. So, make sure you guys check that out tonight. Um... After the podcast, check out freedomfatigues.com or you can check out my personal apparel line, pewpewnationusa.com. Um, I'm a, a affiliate of, of Freedom Fatigues as well, so um, check it all out. All right. NRA show. That's where we're at. I am hot and dying. It is so freaking hot in here. This little air conditioner is working its ass off. But it's still reading 87 degrees on the thermostat. Is it winter yet? I never thought I'd say that. <laughs> uh, now got Pew Pew Nation shirts. Green wildflower shirts. Shirt. Sweet. This is all we wear. Tanks, t-shirts, sweatshirts, hats, belts, stickers. I love it. Stephanie and Eric live. They literally live freedom fatigues. It's awesome. It's fantastic. Uh, you guys are awesome. I love you all. All right, so the NRA show. So the NRA canceled the uh, their annual meeting. Is the big show every year. Uh, it was canceled last year because of COVID. Uh, 
and they decided yesterday to pull the plug on it again. They already had some major uh, companies drop out of the show, so it wasn't that big of a surprise to me, honestly. Uh, I'm trying to find the companies that had already pulled out of the show. Uh, da, 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 da. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Um, Sig, H and K, Ruger. Um, I believe that Smith was talking about pulling out of the show. Uh, There's just a bunch of companies that had already pulled out of the the, sh the show, and um, the NRA was given a bunch of regulations by uh, by Texas that they were kind of keeping under wraps and trying to figure out workarounds for it and stuff like that. Um, and then they finally just pulled the plug. So honestly, I'm kind of happy that they did. I was supposed to go, and then I wasn't going, and then I was going, and then I wasn't going, and it just Honestly, it's just uh, kind of happy I'm not going. So, uh, not a huge deal there. Uh, I'm curious to see how the NRA refunds everybody's money because uh, there's a lot of money in booths that are out there that are already paid for that uh, they have not given guidance on how to get back yet. So, that could be a mess. Um, Stephanie said, this is all we wear. And then Angelo, oh, Angelo is responding to getting the same, getting to be the same here. Love it. Um, Angela's buying stuff for her husband and son for Christmas. They will be thrilled. Heck yeah. It's coming up. Um, so NRA is canceled. That's really all there is to say about it. I mean, I don't know. It's It goes right back to, you know, these, these big corporations, these big, uh, the, the government funding and things like that. They're all pushing these, these things to be canceled. It kind of sucks that the NRA caved to um, to that whole setup. They could have still had a show, even without the major manufacturers there, and they still would have had a giant crowd. People still would have loved it. The NRA is an actual buying event. Um, the public, it's open to the general public, which most of these events are not open to the general public for um, this kind of stuff, and the NRA show is. So it still would have been a fantastic show. They still would have been able to do what they needed to do, um, but unfortunately, they, they pulled the plug, so it is what it is. Not that big of a deal. Um, all right. Let's give away one more thing real quick. Just give it away. I like giveaways today. New people, I love it. Let's give something else away. Um, let me pull this. Somehow my phone closed out of the podcast. So... That being said, I need to pull it back up. Pew, pew nation. There we go. It's pretty sad I have to go to my own page and then have trouble getting to my podcast. Because uh, it sucks. James said NRA isn't what it used to be. The NRA is not what it used to be, unfortunately. And I'm an NRA instructor. I'm an NRA recruiter. Um, you can sign up through me for a discounted rate. Uh, actually, RTBA Firearms um, .com has, has the stuff on it so you can sign up and they still are fighting for our gun rights but they've I don't even know what I don't even know the right right term they've they've softened they've gotten too soft is what they did they caved um, they caved to certain things they, they try to do the play the give or take political game and uh, they used to be a strong force that didn't play that game so, it sucks. I still support the NRA because, like I said, they, they do have the funding. They do still, they are still able to fight for, um, our, for our rights. They just don't do what they should be doing all the time, unfortunately. So, I don't know. It is what it is. But, um, let's give a magazine away real quick. Let's give Tactical Life. Tactical Life Magazine from um, uh, Athlon Outdoors. I write for all these magazines. This is what I do. So if you're new to Pew Pew Nation, um, what I do for a living is I actually test guns um, and write and do photography for 
uh, like 23 different magazines plus Springfield Armory directly. I'd write for some of the NRA publications on uh, time to time. Uh, so that's my life. That's what I do. I get paid to test guns. It's pretty cool. Uh, I don't know if I have any articles in this particular magazine. I don't write for a tactical life that often. Um, bum, 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 bum. No, not in this one. But my Frank, Frank, uh, my friend Frank Baloney's got some articles in there. There's some good stuff in here. So, um, yeah. So who wants to win Tactical Life magazine from uh, Athlon Outdoors? James said spending too much money on board me board members wardrobes versus litigation in cases to fight for 2A. Exactly. Alright. Let's do it. Start guessing 1 through 100 when you see start. Tactical Life Magazine. Uh, Red Lettuce said Wayne and his Lackley need to go. They sucked enough money from the NRA and have taken away donations that could be used to fight for the Second Amendment. Exactly. That's the problem. That's It got political. These idiots came in there and uh, they don't do the right thing for the organization. Keep guessing 1 through 100 for Tactical Life Magazine from Athlon Outdoors. guessing guys one through a hundred just catch it up there oh it's hot I'm so hot through a hundred. Oh, we got some close guesses. All right, we'll pull a Chris here. Chris will be proud. Um, don't it's one through a hundred, but don't guess anything under fifty. That's what Chris does. So if you're new to us, usually I have a co-host. Uh, Chris Vargo from Freedom Fatigues is usually with us, uh, but he had prior engagements today, so he bailed on us. He didn't want to sit in the heat. I think is what it was. <laughs> guessing guys and then you get to see the Smith and Wesson M&P 12 I love this thing I fell in love with this thing today at the range even though it kind of beat me up we'll talk about that in a sec but I fell in love with it and stop guessing stop guessing we have a winner Stop guessing, guys. We got a winner. All right. And the winner of Tactical Life Magazine is Zach Westheimer. Zach, I love you, buddy. I had to say it. Um, so congratulations, Zach, or Zach, as we call him here. <laughs> um, on 
Tactical Life Magazine. Alright. You guys have any questions at all? You guys can ask any questions that you want to um, in the comments below here, and we will answer them. Uh, <laughs> it wouldn't be the same if you didn't. <laughs> you are forever known as Zatch, and then we'll say the right name, just because. That's how, that's how it is. Uh, so congratulations. Make sure you guys send me your information afterwards. Um, but, you guys ready for this? I don't know if you're ready for this. Uh, Brian asked how I PM you. Um, yes, just PM me. Just private message me, either the page or me personally, Andy Grossman, uh, afterwards here, and uh, I'll get you all squared away. Uh, Zach asks, what do you think of, about Biden banning Russian ammo? So, it's been done before. Um, I don't know. It's, it's going to be a mess, that's for sure. Um, I know there's some shops, like not just guns that I work with, that uh, he's sitting on a couple million rounds of 762 right now. So you're going to be able to get it still, but it's going to get scarce pretty, pretty fast. So I'm curious to see uh, who's going to step up and kind of take that spot. Um, I don't know. It's just a, it's, a, it's a mess. Biden doesn't even know what he's doing. That's the problem with the whole thing. Um, Mandy... Uh, James, are you guys still on here? What is, uh, how's, how's Gerbrand? Gerbrand Defense looking with, uh, 762 right now. Or any ammo, actually. I haven't been in your store in a while. Uh, Mandy is part owner of Gerbrand Defense. And James works there. Uh, awesome, awesome shop in, uh, not that, not that James, sorry, James Emery. <laughs> not you, James, other James. <laughs> um, awesome shop also in uh, uh, Waterford there, Waterford, Michigan. Um, I've worked with them as well. Uh, we got some good shops around us. I don't know if they're still on here or not. Or not. Um, speaking of ammo too, notjustguns.com has their auction tonight and I bet you if you go on there there's some ammo available. So, uh, not just guns.com. You guys can make sure you check it out. Who wants to see the rest of this thing? You guys want to see this? You, do you? It's like a little, it's like a face if you hold it upside down. Sure, who wants to see me? Hello. I'm Mr. Bullpup. He's getting to me, I'm telling you. Alright, I'll show you. Look at this thing. Hell yeah. This is what I'm talking about. This is what gets me excited. There's not a whole lot of guns that keep that like really get me excited anymore. Like, oh wow, somebody redid a Glock. Oh wow, somebody built a new 1911. Oh look at it, it's a new AR with some cool parts on it. Wow. Yeah, I want to shoot them. I want to play with them. I don't want to let this thing go. Oh, it's such a beautiful thing. This thing is freaking amazing. This is the Smith & Wesson M&P 12. Bull pump. I'm calling it a bull pump because it is a pump action 12 gauge that will hold 14 rounds of 2 and 3 quarter inch shells. 12 rounds of uh, three inch shells, and I found out today, and it, and I confirmed it, 22 rounds of mini shells, and it'll run everything. It'll run it all well. It'll run it all fast. It doesn't care what it is. It doesn't care what or uh, uh, what orientation it is in the tube. It will run anything you throw at this freaking monster. Um, this thing is fantastic. I'm going to show you the video real quick of me shooting slugs through it today. Um, hopefully, yeah, it's there. Okay. Um, Gavin 
headset looks similar to the DP12 minus the barrel, so it's pretty much a Keltec KSG. Uh, it's really what this thing is. Uh, I am pretty sure Red Lettuce watch it. He brought it up, and I agree with him. Um, I think that this is pretty much Keltec's patent ran out on the KSG, and Smith and Wesson was like, we could do that better, and they did. This thing is a freaking monster. Uh, it is just over $1,100. I think it's $1,160 MSRP right now. Uh, you'll be able to find them all over the place. Not just guns, actually. I already sold five of them. I don't know how they got them, but they, they told me they sold five of them when I, uh, when I told them about it. So I had so much fun at the range today. It was 90 degrees, humid as hell, just disgustingly hot, direct sunlight. And I'm not kidding, like, I never, I haven't had that much fun at the range in a long time. Um, I'm going to show you the video real quick, and then I'm going to tell you about the gun. Uh, let's see what happens here. One ounce slugs. <coughs> oh, yeah. It's got a little punch. selector 
So you can see on both sides there, this sticks out right here. And if you push it that way, it sticks out right there. Um, that is selecting your tube, so right or left. Um, it's kind of a cool concept. I, I, I don't mind the concept of it because if, let's face it, if you are using this for home defense, which is exactly what this thing should be used for, um, you could have home defense rounds, 12 gauge home defense rounds in uh, one tube. You could have buckshot or birdshot in one tube. You could have slugs in, in the tube. You can have a different orientation, however you feel it fits your needs for home defense, and you can obviously just switch those tubes. So you can say, okay, it's on the bird shot tube. Give them a little, pepper them up a little bit, shoot them a few times. That's not stopping them. I switch it over, and now i got home defense rounds or slugs or something crazy in there uh, to, to finish the job. So that's kind of cool. I just don't like the orientation of it. So if you're up here on on the foregrip, which is nice to have on here. You can take it off, obviously, and your hand would be, you know, up here more. Um, so you'd be a little closer to this, I guess. But either way, you all you have to walk your hand back. So if you watch my video, I had to search. You know, I was up on it, and I had to search to switch my tube and then rack again. So um, it did make it a little bit hard to manipulate it. You definitely would have to train yourself. Um, to understand that system and how it works. The other thing that I did not really like is how it loads. So it, lo it loads, the uh, loading gate is right here. Um, you can see the orange in there, those are the two tubes. Uh, they are not easy to load. It's a weird angle, it's very small. I should have brought some dummy rounds with me so I could load it and show you. Um, but it's very, very tight and small in there. Like you can see, I mean, here's my phone. It's a, a normal phone and it like I can't even fit it in that hole so it's very small um, and that is one thing that I was not a fan of it was hard to load but you got seven rounds in the tube so once you load this thing you got 14 rounds you're not like reloading in a home defense situation with this gun so not not a deal breaker by any means the other issue though is when it ejects it ejects out of this port as well well when you're holding this gun like so, you can see that my wrist is covering that ejection port. So, what happens is it results in, and you probably can't see it, but right there, if you can see that red mark there, right here, um, I can't even turn my wrist that way to show the camera, but you can see the red mark a little bit. That is from 100 rounds smoke in my arm. It's a giant welt and bruise, and it hurts. It does. It hurts. Uh, so, kind of a downfall, kind of sucks that it has that, but I can look past that, and uh, I can forgive her for hurting my wrist today. That's all I can say. Yeah, this thing might go to bed with me tonight. <laughs> uh, Brian said most guys hate short stroking. Yes, exactly. Uh, I definitely short stroked it, and I messed up. It was my fault. Uh, the optic that's on it, this is the Vortex AMG UH-1 holographic. Uh, very, very cool optic. It's the only other true holographic optic on the market other than EOTEX. So uh, budget friendly. Obviously, I do honestly do not know the price on the optic. Uh, I, I wasn't doing the video really on the optic, so I didn't really look up the price. But if anybody knows it, post it below. Um, but uh, it's... It, works perfect for this thing. It looks good on there, kind of matches. I like it. I love this gun. That's all there is to it. <laughs> no, not a Vortex fanboy. <laughs> yeah, you guys, everybody can say what they want about Vortex, about Crimson Trace, about whatever. A dot's a dot, man. If it stays on, this is a home defense gun. I'm not beating this optic off the off the uh, the rocks and stuff. Um, I'm a big EOTech fan. I am, but holographic optics a holographic optic. As long as it turns on, who gives a shit? He's black hood dealer. Oh, nice. Well, we might have to talk and get some optics, man. <laughs> Yeah, 
Alright, anybody got any questions about the Smith & Wesson MP12? God, I love this thing. You guys want to watch the video again? I kind of like that video. I, I, I haven't edited the video. I, vid I edited that little clip just for you guys earlier. Um, and that was shooting the slugs, obviously. Uh, there's a whole lot more video. Unfortunately, some of my audio got messed up, so i got to work around that. But um, so We're going to show you again, just because. I love this gun. Uh, let's see what happens here. One ounce slugs. <coughs> oh yeah, it's got a little punch. So 
that was my experience with the KSG. Um, oh yeah, I was going to show you guys this. So, does anybody know what this is? Focus on it. Come on, focus. Focus. Just wants to focus on me. I don't know if they'll focus. Well, come on. Focused earlier when I was trying it. Um, let me try this hand. There we go. It's trying. Does anybody know what that is? I can't believe it will not focus on this thing. That is lead. That is exactly what that is. That is what a one ounce magnum slug looks like after it goes through a table. Um, that is a, could you imagine that going into you? Or you pushing, putting that into somebody? Could you imagine that, seriously? Um, I don't think I have a coin. Well, here. This is a 45 caliber bullet. That is the Magnum 12 gauge slug. Yeah. Could you imagine that? That's a hole. That is going to hurt. Um, so... It was fantastic. I figured uh, I, I recovered a few slugs from the ground, um, and then I actually have one other thing that I thought was incredibly cool. Um, I had this 45 cal round. This was a this is actually a bullet that we fired, and it hit soft dirt. And it literally didn't even mushroom. It didn't do anything. Um, and then this one. So there was a bullet like this sitting on the ground. We were shooting dirt and stuff, so like it, they weren't mushrooming. And you could actually, like, go through, they were going through, like, that soft table, and they would slow them down enough that they were stopping after they went through, like, three rounds of it. And it would deform them a little tiny bit, whatever. Um, so there was a bullet like this, 45 caliber ACP, uh, sitting on the ground. I could see it. I was about 10 yards away from it. I had the FNX 45 Tactical. Um, I was doing some photos for that for the magazine for a article that I'm doing. And uh, that thing is amazing. I love that gun. It is super, super accurate. I threw a Trigicon RMR on it, and I have it tuned in. Like, it is tuned in. So I said, heh, wouldn't it be funny if I shot that round? Wouldn't that be amazing if I could actually hit the round that you could see glistening in the sun? I was like, it's sitting right there. So I tried. I had 12 rounds, 13 rounds left in my magazine. I shot my round, single round, that is what I did. So what that is, is a 45 caliber round that is uh, the shape of a bullet. Because I shot the freaking round. So here you go. 45 cal round. You can see, fits perfectly in that groove. Doesn't want to one in a million time chance that I would have hit that round. I was messing around. I actually hit it. I tried 12 more times to hit the round on the ground and I missed. So um, I got lucky. But I'm going to say that this is solid. It's solid skill right there. Anybody else ever hit a round on the, uh, on the ground with another round? I did. <laughs> All right, I'm going to let you guys go. Thank you guys so much for watching Pew Pew Nation Live. Um, make sure you guys go over to the YouTube channel. Check out the Benchtop review of the Smith & Wesson M&P 12, uh, as well as look for that review of um, that, the range review that I did today of the uh, Smith & Wesson M&P 12. And um, <laughs> Eric said, nodding arrows but with lead. Yes, exactly. Uh, I was pretty impressed that that happened, but uh, like I said, it was, I mean, it was 100% luck. Like, I'm not going to say that was any kind of skill, really. I mean, maybe a little bit, but I have hit a 280-yard a, uh, uh, shot with a pistol, so I am pretty good with a pistol. <clears throat> uh, Stephanie said, awesome show again. Have a good night, all. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Thank you guys so much. Thank you to all the new viewers. This is every Wednesday we do this show, Pew Pew Nation Live. Um... 
Uh, we give away a whole bunch of stuff. We do a bunch of uh, uh, cool things. We show you cool guns. We show you cool products. We get all fired up, uh, go on rants and stuff like that. That's what we do over here. Uh, but mainly, we like giving shit away. So uh, make sure you guys check it out every Wednesday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, if anybody is able to, um, we don't make money off this show, but it does cost a lot of money to run it with uh, these shipping all this stuff and getting giveaway items and things like that. So we're always accepting donations below here. Uh, PayPal is at detailed images photo or detailed images at gmail.com. And the Venmo is PewPewNation, is at PewPewNation. So a couple bucks here or there, whatever you guys can donate, uh, greatly, greatly appreciate it. I am trying to get enough donations, I'm not going to lie, to get a new soundboard so that I can actually take this a step further and start having really, really good sound, have more guests on, things like that. Uh, right now I have the ability to uh, do pretty much nothing with this soundboard that I have. It sucks. The quality is terrible. I can't hook my phone up to it so that I can run a call through it. It just sucks. So I'm trying to get a new soundboard. So uh, if we can get donations for that, that would be fantastic. Again, I don't make money off the show. It's all personally funded. We've given away thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars worth of stuff. Probably about, this is episode 71. I would say we probably have given away at least, I don't know, six, seven grand worth of stuff throughout the, throughout the whole time we've been doing this. So um, that all costs money, obviously. It costs money to ship it. So thanks so much, guys. If you can donate a couple bucks, we greatly appreciate it. If not, it's no big deal. We'll see you guys next week, uh, 7 p.m., same time, same place, new topics. Thanks a lot, guys. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Check out that. Uh, check out FreedomFatigues.com. Check out NotJustGuns.com for their auction tonight. And PewPewNationUSA.com for your um, class needs if you're in Michigan. And all your American-made Pew Pew Nation apparel. See you guys next week. And stay safe. Carry on. Yeah, you know that sound. <laughs>